Hello everybody and welcome back to Sound of Drop. So we found out that uh, shaking off doesn't really work. So just like with the jellyfish, I imagine we get to be at yet another helpless damsel in distress. So let's call out frantically. Yoshi-san, what's wrong? Please come back. Even after what he's done to me, I still resist using violence against Yoshi-san. Of course, I take into account that my strength would be no match for his. More than anything, he had saved me at the jellyfish booth. The one who saved my life. My only thought is that I have to save him. <sighs> Yoshi-san, calm down. It's alright. It's alright. You all. You all. Ow. Ignoring my attempt to calm him, his large arm tenses shooting out towards my leg. This is bad. At this rate... Even so, call his name. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Yoshi-san! Even so, I want to save him. This isn't something that comes from some sense of duty or ethics. Just for myself, I want to save him. You all! After all, you won't even! As he scales my body, I somehow keep him from grabbing both legs. Thanks to the fact that he is distracted, I am somehow able to get through the moment without being grabbed. You won't even? Hyoshi-san, what exactly do you- You all won't look at me! His words get caught up in my chest. You won't look at me. His thought seems to have been etched into his deranged mind. However, denial comes first in my mind before any question. That's not true! Because if I weren't looking at you, I wouldn't be thinking that I want to help you now, would I? You... Uh... Yoshi-san! Yoshi! Can I call his name? No, it isn't enough, so... Ah, crap! <laughs> I forget what his name is! Oh, no... I think if it's Kanji, I'd remember. Please be Shinji. Shinji-san! Having been called by his name, the hand reaching towards me slowly lowers. Although the hand clutching my leg does not loosen, it is correct to say that he has stopped. Um... Ugh. Huh? Me... Please, look at me! Ha! <laughs> Having suddenly broken his silence, Hiyoshi-san grabs onto my right leg with both hands. He pulls me towards himself with a strength that feels as though it could rip my legs apart, scraping the floor and coming closer to me as I resist. No, please stop! Me. I want you all. You all too! I died. God damn it. Wow, grabbing tight onto my buttocks, he bites at me with the same vigor he had attacked my leg. With a sensation as if I'd been pricked by a single needle, my skin bristles in sync with the flow of my blood. All four of his sharpened cuspid pierce my flesh, butting into me little by little, penetrating my skin. Biscuit's red liquid run down along the contours of my buttocks. <laughs> Let me go. Oh, the same. No, get away from me. You too. N no. His white teeth are dyed with red with my blood. Once his cuspids are completely covered in red, a satisfied expression appears on his face, and he removes the teeth he had pierced me with. <laughs> Hiyoshi-san wipes away the blood trickling down my butt with his tongue. Wow, this is very sexual. The sliding sensation creeps up my inner thigh, causing a ticklish sensation in addition to my disgust. That's it. This is good. The reaction. No, no, no! With a look of ecstasy on his face, he stares down at me. The hand clutching my leg has let go, but my whole body has gone limp. I become aware that the area around the wound is gradually going numb. It is similar to feeling of receiving anesthesia at the hospital. Even though I want to move, even though I want to run, my body won't listen to a thing I say. This is all you're good for. Please, stop. If you won't look at me, I'll do this. Even if it's bad, in exchange. Stop. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. And I'm dead. Nope. Before I realize that I've lost consciousness, whether loss of blood is the cause of my heart, there is no one around to tell me the answer. No, or my heart. Sorry. Floating in darkness, I can no longer see. My eyes refuse to open. That's because this is, so to speak, 
the end of me. Yeah, I'm dead. <sighs> Misguided. It's okay. Hmm. Yep, I'm dead. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Okay, so it didn't matter what name I called him. He would, uh, kill me. So I think that one's just a dead end. Although, I don't know why it kept returning me to that point. But... Okay, so I tried to go back just a little bit, but I kind of messed up because I wasn't doing multiple saves. Whoopsie. Anyway, we're just going to tell him that um, I'm fine. We're just going to ignore him because he apparently can will eat our ass, literally. I'm fine, really. Thanks to my nerves and my worriness, I end up speaking unnaturally fast. Moreover, if he really is a kind person, I might end up abusing his good intentions. How cold. Uh, it figures. I say again without thinking. Without my knowing what he's so happy about, the man's mouth loosens into a grip. Hmm, you're pretty clever. I give up. But you know, I seriously am worried about you. Your face is pale and all. That's... His kind words taking me by surprise. I inadvertently avert my eyes. For some reason, I become strangely embarrassed and begin tapping my index finger on my can of cocoa. Well, that aside, since you came to have fun, let me show you around. We are really just fine. <sighs> yeah. Come on, buddy. Take a hint. <laughs> the words come out so naturally, they surprise even me. I have now become a complete idiot, and my eyes meet his. I work part-time in this building, so I'm familiar with it. This area, that is. Hey, what are you doing? Himeno! I gasp and look up. Himeno is there carrying two tickets and some pamphlets. With her hands on her hips and her cheeks puffed out, Himeno glares at the man with narrowed eyes. I think the only ones allowed to hit on junior high schoolers would be high schoolers. N no, I'm not trying to hit on anyone. This girl just looked unwell is all. Mayu, what happened? Uh, let's just say, I think it's what you would call hitting on someone. Huh? You're the worst. Jimeno pulls my arm with a jerk, pulling me backward. Then she inserts herself between the man and I. Hey, mister. Jimeno mutters, facing the man's chest. On hearing her say mister and giving me a puzzled look, the man shows us the plastic name tag hanging from his neck. Uh, I must have forgotten to take this off. Jimeno, speaking of which, he did say he works part-time in this building. Ah, uh, then is that his entry card or something? And then is that his entry card or something? He slaps his knees and rises to his feet. He probably played some kind of sport or something because the movement as he stands looks so effortless. I'm Hiyoshi Kenji. Oh my god, none of those were his name. <laughs> I work part-time at the shop downstairs. With this entry card, I can get to Montana Aquarium at a discount. Is it a company employee discount? Something like that. I'm not exactly a company employee, but I get in at half off anyway, so I come here often. Really? That's quite unexpected for you, mister. When you become older, you'll crave these soothing experiences as well. And I'm not old enough to be a mister. Now he says it. Compared to us, you're definitely old enough to be a mister. Hyoshi-san grimaces angrily, then sniffs in a self Hyoshi-san grimaces angrily, then sniffs in a self-deprecating manner. He appears to be a little older than a college student, so calling him old enough to be a mister is probably rude. But Himeno only said the impression he gave was pretty close. With the aquarium as a shared point of interest, Himeno's attitude towards Hyoshi-san softens. As proof, Himeno talks with Hiyoshi-san about the shops in this building. I don't really know a lot about brands, so I sip my remaining cocoa and listen from the outside. My iced cocoa has become lukewarm cocoa. Well, mister, are you also well versed in urban legends? On hearing Himeno's question, my head pops up in surprise. The corner of Hiyoshi-san's mouth lifts into a grin. Hmm, that's rather unexpected for you as well. 
So you are interested in such things? Of course I am. You're only young ones, so you have to satisfy your curiosity. We're looking into the closed down deep sea fish booth. There's a rumor that it's open on the day of the full moon. Do you know anything about it? Hiroshi San places his hand on his chin and looks down, grunting loudly. Hmm. He glances at me, looks over at the entrance, then finally turns to Himeno and opens his mouth. I think you need to give up on that one thing. Naturally, since I'm a regular here, I often hear rumors. Naturally, since I'm a regular here, I often hear rumors like there are spirits floating in the tanks, or every time a person dies, the jellyfish tank increases by one, and so on. Himeno-chan, sorry, you. Himeno-chan, the story you mentioned shouldn't be anything more than one of those rumors, but stop dancing around it. Just tell me. Previously. I knew someone who went looking into this just as you girls are doing now, Himeno-chan. He went missing soon after. Missing? Without thinking about it, I joined the conversation. Here's san calls out to Himeno, who has said, Later! But it's me rather than Himeno who hears him and spins around first. So I make eye contact with yoshi san and say, Hmm, I think we'll pass. It's fine, don't worry about it. I have the day off anyway. Besides, I think you'd be better off having someone as knowledgeable about this place as I am. Mister, that's not a good look. Mayu said she got no interest in you. Himeno's late response seems to pierce right through Hiyoshi san. Himeno, it's not that I'm not interested, but it's not that I am either. Mayu, don't say anything more than you already have. A bitter grin spreading across his face, Hiroshi san waved to us. Without looking back, we head for the gate to Montan Aquarium. Alright, so we're back at the fish. Um, we're gonna say, I can't take it. I throw up everything that had welled up inside me. It doesn't all come out at once, taking two, three times of convulsing. I feel worried about Himeno all of a sudden. I'll go back. Upon thinking whether or not it's alright for just me to enjoy something so pretty, I reach for the door behind me. Even though we fought, Himeno and I are friends. Sharing such a lovely memory will surely help us make up quickly. I step forward, and it is at that moment. Huh? When I open the door and step through, there is no fish of the world booth. Before I can even rationalize the scene before me, I'm pulled in by some sort of swell. No way. Ugh. Trying to figure out what's wrong, I realize I'm having trouble with getting air. I really want air, so I pause for breath. My mouth fills with a fishy stench. Brine. Seawater. I know from the salty taste that I've swallowed seawater. The reason I can't breathe? It's because all around me is ocean water. I understand that I am in the ocean, devoid of light. No light and no sound in the darkness. Wondering why, I move my limbs. At this rate, I will drown. It hasn't been more than a minute since I got pulled under the sea. How many seconds have passed at this point? No, that isn't it. I have to get above water. However, up to this point, there has been no light overhead, and I'm forced into an inevitable battle of my despair. I frantically endure my suffocation, swimming higher and higher. Suddenly being thrown into the water hasn't thrown off my sense of up or down, as the desire to live serves as an instinct to guide me upward. I still can't see, but I'm alright. Just like that, I seem to have answered my own question. I can feel the clothes I'm wearing become heavy. However, if I have time to shed my clothes, then I have time to continue upward. My thinking is that alone. I heard there is a high pressure in the deep part of the ocean that crushes any living thing, but my body is completely fine. That means where I am at the moment shouldn't be that deep. If I swim hard enough, I should make it. I just have to hit the surface and take a deep breath. How many seconds have passed at this point? I have no sense of time whatsoever in this darkness. Even so, I know that some time has passed since I was thrown into the ocean. 
A minute probably passed a while ago. Here, my consciousness has begun to fade. Immediately after I see the darkness of death, a small light illuminates the tip of my nose. <gasps> Are we gonna make it? Oh my god. Because I have been swimming so frantically, I haven't noticed, but it seems as though I have gone up quite a ways. It will be all right. The surface is close. I reached out my hand. I reached out towards that light. That is all that I can do. That's because my legs won't move. No matter how frantically I try to move them, my legs won't even quiver. It feels as if something has ensnared them. It has the elasticity of a bottomless trampoline. From the tips of my toes to my rear end, the soft sensation wraps tightly around me. I want to think this is a lie. No, I have actually decided I will not believe it. That a giant octopus has wrapped itself around my legs. Its gum-like suckers are the size of the palm of my hand. I can't even imagine how large its entire body is. Well, that sucks. The light is getting farther away. My eyes have already closed. For some reason, Jimeno's smiling face floats before me, though it should be her angry face that I see last. And I'm so dead. Just like that, I'm in darkness. As much as, it, as much as it has tightened up, my legs have lost all feeling. No wonder, my legs are no longer what they once were. With the depletion of my oxygen supply, my brain has already changed into a machine for merely processing my situation. Within the darkness, it, dispass it dispassionately communicates my non-existent will to my four limbs, which have lost all sensation. It won't be long before the only thing I can sense is darkness. That's because I have already become part of that darkness. Wow. Into the silent abyss. All right, we have no choice but to go into the jellyfish room. Glad we knew that. So we're back after the jellyfish encounter and I've decided to try a different line of dialogue. So we're just gonna say, please Hiyoshi-san. Trusting in his masculine appearance, oh boy, I bow deeply. In reality, it was as Hiyoshi-san had said. I had very little stamina to begin with, and now fatigue was building up inside me. Deciding to stay standing up was good, as these heavy legs of mine were proof of. As for things with Himeno, it would be best to talk them through later. If we talked them over in this tense state, we would probably just get into another argument. Hiyoshi-san might even serve as our mediator. As expected in this gloomy building, he didn't have to walk far before he disappeared. The sound of his gradually fading footsteps had also disappeared. The only thing I could hear nearby was my own breathing. That's why that high, roaring scream pierced right through my eardrums. Gah! It was a scream that seemed to have echoed through every corridor. No, in and out of the whole building. It wasn't just someone shouting, but someone crying out as if splitting apart their throat. At the sense of impending danger that voice bore, my own throat began to tighten. That scream! That voice wasn't merely familiar. It was the voice of Hiyoshi-san, who had been right in front of me just one minute earlier. After that single loud scream, I could no longer hear his voice. hiyoshi san I quickly stand up, running to the source of the scream. The p this place connects the tube tunnel booth and the souvenir shop. That's where I heard the voice coming from. I run toward the tunnel tank. Huh? Mayu-chan, I told you to wait there for me. More importantly, that scream a minute ago. Did something happen? Hiyoshi-san is sitting at the entrance of the tunnel tank, not far from the aquarium entrance. At my question, he gives the wishy-washy reply of, You're worried about me. I'm so happy. Nah, it's a somewhat embarrassing story, but it looked like there was a person floating inside that tank. Under the circumstances, it just surprised me. A person in the tank? Speaking of which, Jimeno mentioned something like that. 
but I'm glad. I thought you got caught up in some terrible situation like I had earlier. I was relieved from the bottom of my heart. Following that relief, I became aware of my own fear of being isolated again. Chuckling, Hiroshi san scratches his head. Say, Mayu chan. I never got to hear the rest of what he was going to say. Uh huh? It all took place in a matter of seconds, leaving me unable to make sense of what had happened. However, I gradually realized what was unfolding before my eyes. From Hiyoshi-san's neck up, I could see through to the tank. I didn't understand what I was seeing. In other words, his head was no longer where it should have been. Having lost a piece of himself so valuable to the human body, he collapsed slowly on the spot. From there, he never moved again. Oh, what? Soaking up the blue lighting, his reddish black blood spread across the floor. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. No! This time, it was my turn to split my vocal cords. Oh, boy. He just got his head cut off. What? Why? How had he gotten like this? What could have happened to have left him in this state? Hiyoshi-san's head tumbles along the ground and catches my eyes. His eyes are wide and his pupils dilated. The grin I had seen hours earlier is still spread across his face. There are marks at the nape of his neck as if his head had been bitten clean off. Hiyoshi-san? I intended to run. I intended to run and leave the dead Hiyoshi-san. Whatever left those bite marks was still nearby. But I couldn't do it. Oh, my turn. I love dying. That's my favorite part about this game. <laughs> it hurts. The area below my knees had become pitch black. My boots, mom. There was no pain. Only the visualization of pain running through my mind. In spite of losing my legs, I can't actually feel the pain. Of course not. For that body of mine has lost its legs. I'm watching it from a separate place. This subjective point of view would have been impossible while I was alive. My head was already just like Hiyoshi-san, just rolling around on the floor. The cold temperature of my blood. That was the last thing I felt. Right before I lost consciousness, I saw its unbelievable true form through the wavy mist of my fading vision. With many fangs and a giant body, it was a fish. Well, of course it's a fish. We're in an aquarium. <laughs> but what fish? Decapitation 1. Don't you mean decapitation 2? No? Okay. Oh, hey! We got a bad end with, with Hiyoshi's dead body here. That's cute. <laughs> At any rate, let's head inside. We're not going to investigate that fish. I suggest to him. Guess we should. It would be good to get a look at something like... What? I di we died again? Seriously? <laughs> Decapitation 2. There it is. Oh my god. Ugh. <sighs>